On March 28, 1979, Unit 2 of the Three Mile Island Nuclear Power Plant, located just 10 miles southeast of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, came within 30 minutes of a core meltdown. Large amounts of lethal radioactive poisons were spewed out into the environment then and afterwards. The nuclear industry says that nobody died because of the accident back there at Three Mile Island, but don't tell that to the people here in Goldsboro or others living in what's become a valley of death surrounding Three Mile Island. This is in my neighborhood, let's just, let's put it up like this. Um, right here, this is a rose, a wild rose that had a bud with a full set of leaves growing out of the center. <laughs> I have this specimen, it's dried and very brittle. Mm. This is a zinnia from uh, Lancaster County, which is a classic color mutation. And this and this is the same plant. This is one plant and you can see the stalk is about three inches wide and flat. And it had abnormal um, centers that grew like a caterpillar. This is the normal flower here and there were about three on the one plant that were quite large. There was a farmer also had a lot of problems with his goats and sheep, and a few years after that, he had uh, a stillborn two-headed calf uh, born on his farm in New Cumberland, which is very close to where I live. It's just across the river. About how far is that from Three Mile Island? Um, it's probably five or six miles, mm. you know, depending on what part of that area. But this was a double-headed calf stillborn. And um, this farmer, Herb Myers, also recently died of cancer. There have been health studies after health studies, including those done by the state of Pennsylvania, that have shown that there were no health effects from the Three Mile Island accident. The amount of radiation released from the plant during that accident was the maximum amount anybody could have received was equivalent to a chest x-ray. So the safety systems at Three Mile Island worked, and the follow-up health studies have shown that the public was not damaged from that accident. Jane, the nuclear industry says uh, that, uh, well, Three Mile Island happened, and uh, nobody died at Three Mile Island, and uh, everything is uh, mm -hmm. back to normal. Uh, mm -hmm. Has it been normal? Is it, is it OK now? Well, I think that it's far from normal. Uh, what I have seen with my own eyes and what I have heard from the testimony of the people of what they experienced clearly demonstrates that what came out of that plant was neither harmless nor inconsequential. Up to several million gallons of radioactive water were flushed right out of the core into the basement of the reactor, leaving about 75% of that core uh, uncovered. It probably came within half hour to an hour of the total meltdown. But the thing about looking backwards at such accidents, I mean, it was finally terminated purely by luck, by someone coming on site and trying various things that he happened to stop the discharge from the reactor. What most people don't know about Three Mile Island is that in the licensing, we were prohibited from even considering severe accidents, accidents that would be worse than the safety systems were designed to withstand. Quite literally, any accident that exceeded the capability of safety systems of the plant was excluded from discussion in the license proceedings because the NRC ruled arbitrarily that it was too improbable, so it was beyond the scope of the proceeding. The other thing that's important about Three Mile Island is to recognize that accident started in what the nuclear industry and the spokespeople for the NRC like to call the non-nuclear part of the plant. There is no non-nuclear part of the plant in the sense of what's important to the safety of a nuclear power plant. In the aftermath of the accident at Three Mile Island, the world understood that severe accidents not only could happen but do. You went door to door down this street, and this street is, uh, I mean, there is Three Mile Island right there, and there yep. is right. Unit 1 in operation right. uh, with the steam coming out. And you found cancer uh, yeah. up and down the street, you said? Right. right. Every other house? Right. Yeah. Sometimes, some of them were two in a row. Really? 
Yeah, we used a, um, a medical history sheet uh, that uh, Dr. Carl Johnson helped us with so that mm -hmm. we could ask the proper questions. Uh, we tried to find out if they were contacted by the health department, many of which were never contacted. Um, we found out whether they uh, evacuated, or and if they no. did evacuate, where they evacuated, how long, when they came no. back, all of that. Jane Lee found that her daughter-door -door monitoring this 600% increase in cancer from before and after the accident. Do the people here think that this evident increase is connected to Three Mile Island? Well, you know, it's pretty quiet now, as I think Jane can understand. She probably knows this, too. It's the, They don't talk as much anymore about it. But uh, I think it's on everybody's mind when there's cancer and so forth. I, I You know, someone dies, I think TMI's brought up right away. Yeah, yeah. I think it is up here in the hill, I know. Because we've had, so, hey, we had a lot of deaths up here. These are the, the deaths, the cancers and the cancer deaths that we discovered in the very rural area where we found a 600-fold increase. This particular area here is a the development of 500 homes. And in that 500 homes, we found uh, 45 living cancers right here, 23 cancer deaths, which was a total of 68. Uh, we found uh, 53 benign tumors, 39 thyroid problems. 209 uh, people with respiratory problems. Uh, a lot of people complained of respiratory problems following the accident. This area here was where we just took all the pictures where there were many, many cancers. This is an elevated area up from the plant. This, is, this here is elevated and this is elevated, way up in the air so that whenever they had the accident, the radiation hit the mountainside and it just kept hitting the mountainside, and those people, many of them died very quickly. These are cancer deaths and leukemia deaths. The ones with the exon are the leukemias, and the ones with the black and the white stripe through are cancers. These were living cancers. These are just the people who brought suit against uh, the company. These do not by any means include all of the cancers. Quietly, Three Mile Island's owners have given cash settlements some as high as a million dollars to the families of those who died or had children born with birth defects as a result of Three Mile Island, like Debbie Baker. I had a child that was born exactly nine months after the accident with Down syndrome. So to me, it's, it's, we are victims. How far did you live from the plant? We lived, we lived about five air miles from the plant. I mean, it was in a development that was sitting on a hill so it was about five miles. You grew up in this area? Yes. Your folks lived in just a few miles from, uh, from the plant for many years? Yes, they lived three miles from the plant. When Three Mile Island was first constructed, I mean, how did you feel about it being built and then being turned on? It didn't bother me. It was like, it's always been there. You know, it just never, ever bothered me. When did it begin bothering you? After the accident. There, you know, it just... To have that happen to a person, an accident affect your entire life. You know, I mean, when an accident happened, we, when we were informed of the accident three days later, to me it was like, my whole family's going to die because I knew radiation killed you, I knew radiation caused harm, and that's, that was my extent of what radiation did. So to me, we were all going to die. And I think that affected me the most. But I didn't really start really researching it until after my son was born. Well, what did you learn? I learned that our government covers up many, many things. It's, I think what bothered me the most is I was always the most patriotic person. You know, if we had Olympics and I seen our flag, it was like, it was fantastic. I was such a patriotic person. But what I've learned is that the government has a way of covering things up. And, and to me, I think it's just, it's just shocking. It's just, that hurt the most. Why? What, what do you think it's been covering up issues involving nuclear power? Because if, you, if they don't cover it up and they realize what the extent of radiation, what it does to people, we would never have another nuclear facility. But as long as people did not die exactly at the time that that accident happened, they can always get away with saying nobody died from a nuclear accident. And that's not the truth. If you go to Three Mile Island and you, you spend time and talk to enough people in the neighborhoods around there, 
you begin to feel like you're either in the aftermath of a nuclear war and or, or in the middle of a Japanese science fiction movie. I mean, it's, it's really bad. Uh, uh, children have been affected. There's a lot of childhood leukemia. There are still mutant plants in the area. There are still bizarre things happening to the animals. And, you know, a lot of stuff surfaced at Chernobyl. We've seen pictures of an eight-legged colt that was born downwind from Chernobyl. Um, thousands of children's hair falling out downwind from Chernobyl. All this happened at a smaller scale uh, at Three Mile Island and is continuing to happen. The, the, the bottom line is I've spent time at Three Mile Island. Uh, uh, it was the greatest industrial disaster in the United States and a, a very tiny crew of journalists, uh, less, than, less than five, really followed the story in terms of health impacts. Uh, I went there in 1980, a year after the accident, on assignment from Rolling Stone, and my uh, mandate was to investigate the, the psychological impacts of the accident. It didn't even occur to us at Rolling Stone that there might be health impacts. And it first uh, became evident to me that there probably were when I interviewed Jane Lee in a farmhouse three miles from Three Mile Island, and she began showing me affidavits from local farmers about problems that had, uh, occurred with the farm animals in there. And uh, then we looked at the health records from the state of Pennsylvania, discovered that the infant death rate in Harrisburg had soared in the three months after the accident relative to the same period of time over the previous two years. Then began interviewing people and discovered that in the area, many people's hair fell out. Now, of course, you know, there was a lot of media about how uh, the problems in the area with the people were because of the anti nuclears who came in and spread scare stories. Well, you have to really scare someone to get their hair to fall out. Uh, you know, and it was happening to dogs and cats, too. And I don't think the dogs and cats were, like, listening to the radio and freaking out. You know, this was like, <laughs> these, these, were, these were physiological problems, I'm pretty sure. Um, and then, you know, people started turning up with, with sores, and, and many people reported a metallic taste in their mouth. And uh, I, as I did more research on killing our own and other radiation effects, found that same strange taste in, in people's mouths. Uh, it occurred at Rocky Flats and during the, some of the fires. It, it occurred at various other nuclear facilities and, amazingly enough, and also to people downwind from the bomb tests. And you know who reported it? The bomb crew on the Enola Gay. When they flew away from dropping the bomb, they all said, after the thing went off and the cloud went up, they said they had strange metallic taste in their mouth. Uh, and then it turns up again at Three Mile Island. Now, we looked at the records um, from the uh, uh, Nuclear Regulatory Commission and from the uh, utility company. And they all claim, essentially, that not enough radiation escaped to harm anyone. But, there are two problems. First of all, we don't know how much radiation it actually does take to harm someone. In fact, uh, the evidence is that any amount of radiation can harm anyone, given uh, biological makeup and where the radiation goes and what kind of radiation it is. Second of all, we found out something very bizarre and interesting and probably very much in character, unfortunately, which is that nobody really knows how much radiation got out from Three Mile Island. After all these years, 12 years, uh, the, the stack monitors broke down. They had uh, thermoluminescent dosimeters, which are essentially radiation badges that circled the plant, right? These, were these de detect gamma radiation. They claimed that they, they, that they saw nothing on these monitors, but I read their uh, records, and in fact, one monitor in the northwest quadrant, which is exactly where the wind patterns would have driven the worst of the radiation, did show excess radiation. And you know what they did? They went in and they said, well, it must have been a defective monitor. And they called it the northwest anomaly. So uh, uh, we, uh, we know that radiation comes down in clumps from an accident like Three Mile Island. So basically, it's our feeling uh, uh, that, that clumps of radiation did come down, and we now I went back, I've gone back over the years periodically and interviewed people, and cancers, leukemias, birth defects, uh, uh, stillbirths, heart, uh, stroke, emphysema, uh, all the stuff that you would expect to find after a nuclear bombing and that we did find downwind from the bomb tests has surfaced at Three Mile Island. Dr. Ernest Sternglass, Professor Emeritus of Radiological Physics at the University of Pittsburgh Medical School, and Dr. Jay Gould, co-author of Deadly Deceit. I was called there uh, by environmental groups to, uh, to examine and to advise the people based on the levels of radiation at the time, whether or not uh, there was reason for concern and whether or not they were being told the truth by the utilities about the danger. You arrived on the second day. Yes, on the second day I flew in from Pittsburgh. 
and I carried a Geiger counter with me, and as we came in for the landing, I could see my readings going up to three, four, five times the normal level. So I knew that radioactive gases were still being discharged at a rate that was very significant, easily detectable. And so when I got to the news conference and it was clear that people were very concerned and uncertain they were being lied to, I told them that because of the continuing radiation releases, that certainly the pregnant women should be evacuated immediately and, and also the young children. And it took them, unfortunately, two more days before the governor finally uh, agreed to do this. And so we have since, of course, been following the health effects of what happened there. And unfortunately, in Dr. Gould's uh, statistical material, the huge statistics that he's been able to obtain from our government, from HEW, we now find that indeed there was a tremendous rise in both infant mortality and total mortality, not just in Harrisburg, but all over the northeastern United States, wherever these gases drifted. Especially in a radius of about 500 miles from um, Harrisburg. New York City was not as much affected, we found, as Upper New York State because of the, of the direction, of the, which direction the of the winds. Yes. The winds blew up towards Syracuse and Albany and, and Buffalo and yeah. uh, then up towards New England into Vermont. I can illustrate this with another chart which yeah. takes this particular chart, the total age adjusted mortality, and focuses on the, the, the most recent period since 1970, kind of, sort of a blow up but using the same uh, uh, technique of comparing the observed rate, yes. age adjusted, with what would be expected if the uh, uh, rates had continued to decline at the normal 1% per year uh, level. And here you can see that starting in 1979, there Which is the year of the accident. The yes. year of the accident there's a perceptible upward divergence, which is statistically significant in the sense that there is no, no way you could regard this as a chance result. And that difference, that excess, we, we recall I define the excess as the difference between the observed and the expected, mm -hmm. continues to the point where this red area measures about a million excess deaths. When you think back today about being prohibited from raising the issue of catastrophic accidents at Three Mile Island, and then the disaster happened, what do you think? How do you feel? It's, it's a very hard failure to live with. No one has been able to halt the ultimate licensing of a nuclear power reactor. But as I have seen friends in the Three Mile Island area suffer the consequences, including loss of life, and live with very real psychological damage in addition to real illness, it, it's quite heartbreaking to have been unable to halt that plant from going online. And the accident continues. For years, there have been planned releases of some of the hundreds of tons of radioactive poisons still sitting in the plant along the Susquehanna River in an otherwise beautiful and green valley. The accident uh, had a cleanup that's still going on. And they have released radiation from Three Mile Island ever since the plant was built. Jane Lee discovered for the lawyers that in 1974 there was a one rem documented release of radiation from unit one and then in 1980 you had 57,000 curies of radioactive gas vented from the reactor building and in chernobyl they say well their containment you know was damaged and it was you know everything got out and that tmi held everything of course they held everything but what did they do they let it out a year later you know, so what's the difference? The people got exposed 
ever since 1974 with the low levels and periodically, you know, an accidental release. And then you have the accident with massive amounts of radiation being released. A year later, you have the cleanup and uh, the venting of the krypton, and now they're venting radioactive tritium because it's the easiest, cheapest way to get rid of it. They're um, evaporating it over the same people that were exposed in 1979. So all of this is cumulative, and it won't ever make anybody get better, and it's only going to add to the body burden that people have already suffered. And one of the things that the public doesn't know is that reactors are specifically designed to make releases. They release iodine-131, uh, they release tritium, they release krypton, uh, they release radon on a regular basis because it's a, it's a burping kind of a thing. It's, it's gas that the plant must get rid of because it generates this gas, and it's designed to do that. Uh, over and above what it's designed to do is you have these malfunctions where you have additional radiation that is uh, dumped into the environment because there's nowhere else for it to go. So then you get, along with what I'm talking about, you'll get cesium, you'll get strontium, and all of these things uh, come out into the environment and act upon the body as free radicals. And this uh, Im impacts on the DNA within our bodies. We can't see it, we can't feel it, we can't smell it, we can't taste it, we can't hear it, but it's doing the damage all the time. The children and the elderly are the most susceptible. Dr. Helen Caldicott, founder of Physicians for Social Responsibility. As you eat food containing strontium-90, the body thinks it's calcium. It gets absorbed from the gut, it gets deposited in bone where the blood cells grow, and it can induce uh, bone cancer or osteogenic sarcoma, which is very lethal, or leukemia, which is cancer of the white blood cells, which are made in the bone marrow by mutating a regulatory gene. Everybody has to know what a chromosome is. Because if you don't understand chromosomes, you don't understand radiation, you don't understand nuclear power. Chromosomes are the long structures upon which the genes are located. There are 26 chromosomes in a human cell. And in the, on the chromosomes are many hundreds of thousands of genes which we're now mapping. But there seems to be a single gene in each cell which controls the rate of cell division called the regulatory gene. And what radiation does is it biochemically damages that DNA molecule. So the molecule or the regulatory gene does not behave in a responsible fashion. And when the cell starts to divide into two by mitosis, the cell division doesn't stop. And for some unknown reason, although we're starting to understand it a bit better, the cell continues to make DNA and DNA and DNA and DNA. And so it keeps dividing and dividing rapidly and produces millions and billions of cells, and that's a cancer. So it takes one mutation in a single gene, on a single chromosome, in a single cell to induce the cancer cycle. When you're exposed to radiation, you don't suddenly drop dead of cancer and you don't get your cancer within a year. It takes any time from five to 50 years for the cancer to develop and it doesn't wear a little sign saying, I was made by Hershey's chocolate bar, you ate 20 years ago. To me, the only solution is simply to close them down, recognize we've made a horrible environmental, species, no, more than that. Uh, it, it, it transcends our species, certainly. And the, the impacts that will occur in consequence of the damage already existing um, will be detrimental to many forms of life. You know, Rosalie Bertel, Dr. Bertel, who is a biostatistician, puts it so wonderfully, I think. She says, the only place we can get human beings is from human beings. And any damage that we allow to the sperm and the ova, the genetic material of which we are composed, will ultimately be suffered by those who follow us. We have a species responsibility. We have an ecological responsibility. And the uses of atomic energy are incompatible with the exercise of that responsibility. And in terms of the restart, um, the restart was really incredible. Um, people, citizen interveners, um, did everything under the sun. 
legally, and a few of us got arrested at the gates of TMI protesting that it was an ultra-hazardous operation, and any more radiation dumped onto the people in this area would cause additional health problems, not just cancers and leukemias, but birth defects and asthmas and allergies, and um, it's, it's just incredible, you know, the amount of damage that has occurred to the people and to the livestock and to the flowers in my yard. You know, I don't even do a garden anymore, and I have an acre of land. I have a, a big pot and I have to spend 12 or $15 a year to buy soil from out of the area so I can grow tomatoes. You know, and that's really disgusting. And it's America. And while the dire consequences of Three Mile Island continue, unsuspecting people move into new houses rising in the shadow of the nuclear plant, smack in the middle of this valley of death. We haven't learned a thing uh, from that reactor that's sitting down there that is a hunk, a, a, a total hunk of wasted radioactive metal. The plant was only a year old. They cannot clean up. They don't know how to clean it up. And they tell us that they were going to clean it up. So we have a radioactive waste storage center down on the Susquehanna River. The general public believes that the reactor accident at Three Mile Island is over because most of the damaged uranium fuel has been taken out of the core. However, they don't realize that there is enough debris, uranium debris, left inside that reactor to cause an accident to start up once again at Three Mile Island. The utility, GPU, did a study of recriticality at that reactor, and they estimated that only 200 pounds of debris reforming at the bottom of that reactor would be sufficient to give you criticality to essentially start up the reactor accident all over again. In other words, if there is a fire, a chemical explosion, perhaps a hydrogen gas explosion, or even human error, and the core begins to jostle a bit and uranium debris reforms at the bottom of the reactor, it is now generally believed that the accident could start all over again. The neutron count would start to rise, water would start to boil once again, enormous heat would be generated, however, this time without any of the safety systems intact. The accident is not over for America's greatest nuclear power plant accident.